Okay, here we're gonna be taking a look at the sodium potassium pump. So this could be part of topic one when we're looking at structure and function relationships. It could be also for the nervous system when we're talking about um, depolarization, repolarization, and how to actually return the sodium ions and the potassium ions back to the correct locations they need to be. So this is a generalized structure of a neuron, and this line here that's stretching down is called an axon. And to pass information along this axon, in general, just remember this, sodium rushes into it, and then potassium rushes out. And this pattern continues all the way down, sodium in, potassium out, sodium in, potassium out, sodium in, potassium out, and that's how this message gets transmitted all the way down to these axon terminals in the end. Now, after a message has been transmitted, the sodium is now in and the potassium is out, but we need to reset that. We need to reset that so that the next message that passes along this nerve cell can actually be accepted. So at some point after the sodium's rushed in through facilitated diffusion and the potassium's rushed out through facilitated diffusion, we need to return things back to their correct locations. And it turns out that process is an active process. It's the only way that they can that this sodium and potassium can get back to where they uh, where they were originally, and it's called the famous uh, sodium potassium pump. So this is a close-up diagram of what a sodium potassium pump actually looks like, and you can see its structure is very specific. I know it's drawn like a cartoon here, but this is somewhat, this is actually pretty accurate that there are some binding spaces inside here. So in order to get the sodium back out and the potassium back in, there are actually two binding spots. Um, for potassium and three binding spots for sodium and it actually has to get trans transferred across the membrane in that proportion for every two potassium ions three sodium ions will get passed along so another term that we can use to describe this membrane pump, which is as it's often used, it's called a sodium potassium pump, is you can call it an antiporter, which transmits these ions in opposite directions. That's basically what it is. It's a pump, requires some energy, and it's gonna move these ions in opposite directions. They're traded, so that's called an antiporter. So pumping means energy is required. That energy that's required is actually called ATP. When ATP is used, you can see it gets broken down to ADP and an inorganic P. So this is AD, ATP actually stands for adenosine triphosphate, as in TRI, as in 1, 2, 3. And then when one of those phosphates jumps off, you end up with adenosine diphosphate. Di as in 2 or double, as in 1, 2, adenosine diphosphate. So that's how you can see that ATP has been used. You'll see lots of diagrams that use ATP like in the Krebs cycle in cellular respiration, like in photosynthesis, and you'll see people will often draw ATP with a little arrow coming off of it, showing that ATP is getting used. If it's going the other direction, it means ATP is being produced. So the full name of this pump system is actually sodium potassium ATPase. ATPase because this is an enzyme that is actually breaking down ATP in order to help us get these ions to the other positions. So lots of names we've heard of for this thing. I've heard of the sodium potassium pump. We've heard of it as the sodium potassium antiporter. We've heard of it as the sodium potassium ATPase, but I prefer the full name sodium potassium antiporter pump ATPase all around awesome protein. So overall, once again, one ATP molecule will help to do this kind of movement. Two potassiums will move back in and three sodiums will move back out. I'm talking, of course, about potassium ions and sodium ions. And this last point is quite important. You have to imagine this thing has to be attracted to the ions, right? So if it's attracted to sodium, then sodium will be able to come in. But how does it release sodium on the other side? Well, this protein actually switches between two different states of differential attraction. It's a fancy way of saying if you're a person on a date or trying to date people and you just can't make up your mind, sometimes you like people like this, sometimes you don't like people like this. I guess you can probably use that to explain uh, why I'm not married yet. <laughs> that was a little bit personal. But anyways, what I'm saying is sodium can get attracted here and then it can get rejected. And that's good because on one side we want to pull the sodium in and then we want to let it go, right? Pull it close, then let it go. Pull it close and then let it go.